What brings me here is um, a different reason than what I thought I would come to Kenya for. I have family in Kenya and I've heard about Kenya's incredible hospitality, food, wildlife, people. But this time I'm here as UNICEF's Goodwill Ambassador um, in response to an emergency crisis that is happening um, not just in Kenya but through the Horn of Africa which is Ethiopia, Somalia included as well. Um, I went to the Turkana region to um, see people and um, the work that UNICEF and its partners are doing on the ground to be able to provide relief in terms of treatment, food, um, in terms of water, sanitation, um, specifically to young children um, in the community. What I witnessed is very difficult to describe. Um, I come from India. It's a country that has seen poverty and affluence at the same time like Kenya, but um, this kind of human suffering, especially when it comes to children, especially when it can be prevented, should not exist. Um, children dying of starvation, um, not, no access to food for days to go, no access to water, um, trying to get water from rivers and you know, getting diseases like diarrhea, um, which leads to their death. Um, and all of this is preventable as long as you know they have access to clean water and food. Um, and I think my my position as UNICEF's goodwill ambassador is to remind the world that even though this region um, has been known for this kind of plight, this is the worst that it's been in 40 years. This drought that is happening right now is due to a climate crisis that the poorest nations and the poorest communities are not really responsible for. The carbon emissions that happen, um, that are happening in the world are predominantly done by developed countries, but the people affected the most are the ones that contribute the least to the environment. So um, it was very difficult to witness. I went to hospitals, I went to schools, I went to homes, I went to communities, and I spoke and met with a lot of people, and. Um, heard from them firsthand what they need, what they have. Um, families, because they don't have access to clean water, are migrating because their livestock are dying and that's their only way of um, livelihood. They are migrating around the world, uh, around like to Uganda, crossing the borders to try and find water and pasture. And because of that, children don't get their immunization when they need. They have, they're not vaccinated. Their health is compromised. They don't get Real, uh, they don't get food or clean water to be able to sustain themselves and not just to grow and thrive but just to survive. Children dying of hunger should not exist because it is extremely preventable in this world, in this world that has so much and so much excess and we've seen that around the world. Um, this should not be happening. So I'm here to highlight that and implore to the global community that they don't forget um, what is happening in this part of the world. cash is, is money to be able to buy food, to be able to um, get create boreholes, to be able to create pumps where you get clean water, to create systems where sanitation and hygiene um, you know can can be accessed, to have medication, to have health workers. Right now I went to a hospital and that kind of a dire situation requires funding. The Kenyan government has provided a lot of relief. I mean, I have to give credit to the government of Kenya. They have contributed a tremendous amount of donations, as has the U United States government. They have uh, contributed tremendous amounts of donations. So I think what is important is for the global community to understand that our climate com emissions need to, um, our carbon emissions need to reduce tremendously, and also that this crisis is an emergency and it will only increase if it is not stopped. But throughout this journey, I think what I've tried to do is take out my time as much as I can to travel to places as much as I can, to use my platform because I know people hear me, they will maybe listen to what I have to say through mediums like yours and I can maybe pass on the message of people that cannot take their voices as far, probably. Um, and I've tried to 
give as much of my time as I could to be able to travel and showcase um, and amplify the voices of especially children in India around the world. I think what I would say is women right now are going through a very, very interesting and difficult time around the world. We live in the age of information where our voices can travel. And I think it's really important for us to band with our sisters that don't really have a voice, to talk about, you know, especially when it comes to basic human rights and access to education, to healthcare, uh, which is denied to a lot of women, options and choices. And you see that percolating throughout the world. And I think that it is time for us to, as much as we can, band together and, you know, stand for each other. And I would just say that this is a great time where sisterhood is, um, it's beautiful to see.